work at Hy-Vee, we just keep everything the same so that there's, you know, we're not, we're, we're doing everything legit um, or according to protocol. But there are dietitians who have, you know, written up, this is their cash rate and, you know, their billing rate, um, insurance billing rate is such and such. So it's very clear and um, there's something called the no surprises rule. <laughs> you know how insurance, you're not supposed to have any surprises. Um, so there's a, a rule out by that. We still have surprises, but it, the goal is to have the lesser of that. So um, I like the way that we, um, so there's not a right or wrong way to do that. Um, um, in, in my practice, we just keep the rates all the same. But um, in some private practices, their cash price um, is less than what the rate they are um, billing the insurance providers. But you don't want to be um, with whatever your insurance billing rate is, you want to keep it the same. Um, you don't want you can't. Oh, I'm going to charge this um, insurance Aetna this and this other one another another price. It needs to be consistent. So thanks for asking that uh, question, Jenny, and hopefully I answered it or someone else may want to chime in and uh, add to that. Another question um, we had come in is um, from Whitney Larson. And she says, and this is where I need, um, hopefully some others can help with this. Um, wanted to talk about modifiers and how to choose the best diagnosis codes to go with the most coverage of our patients, um, the best coverage. And again, that's gonna depend on um, your, your client's insurance. And, but like, like I said, diabetes is generally all, of, always covered um, under, even under the preventive plan. What does Whitney mean when she's talking about um, a modifier? I'm going to pull up a different, um, a 1500 form, because I got to thinking, how many people actually know what a 1500 form look like? And, and we'll show you what, um, where modifiers go or what a form looks like. So I'm going to grab... This one. Okay. Are you guys seeing the 1500 form right now? Yes. Okay, great. So um, this is what a 1500 form looks like. So those of you who are currently billing, um, you have this software that generates this 1500 form. Those who you are an outpatient or have a hospital billing for you, they are entering, entering information into um, their software, and then they're generating this 1500 form that goes electronically um, to insurance, the desired insurance company. So um, you can see here, oh, it, um, this one patient name, John Doe is in here. I gave him a fake blue, blue cross shield, blue shield um, insurance. Right here in this column 21 is where you would put the ICD-10 code. So I gave this uh, client uh, pre-diabetes code, and then I also gave him a BMI, put a BMI in there, because often if they're overweight or obese and you combine it with um, diabetes or pre-diabetes or um, high cholesterol or high triglycerides, that combination can help um, with payment. Again, depends on the provider. Um, here um, this is the date that I met with this person. And then the 97802 right here, that's medical nutrition therapy. So that's what I bill. So that may be what your coders, if you're in the hospital setting um, or have a certified diabetes program, that might be what they're putting in there. 
or uh, G0108, which would be diabetes self-management education, um, which you can do if you have a certified diabetes program. And then right here is this 33. This section says modifier. And 33 is a modifier for preventive services. And um, that is something that I didn't learn about until the last couple of years. And so that a preventive plan, often that coverage is covered at 100%. And so that's a, when we're um, billing what we're always trying to get that. So um, it doesn't even then go to the patient's deductible. It's just paid at 100%. So with all of my private payers, I, I put that on just to have that roll through there to see if um, that will get paid at 100%. Um, if it doesn't, then it'll go toward their deductible. Um, and then once their deductible is met, then the insurance company would just start paying you if you were doing multiple visits with a client. Um, one area where I do not use that is in Medicare because um, there isn't a preventive plan as far as I know with Medicare. I, I accidentally did that once and it, and it kicked the claim back. So with Medicare and I don't bill Medicaid. So if someone on our call bills Medicaid and has used, could answer that question, that, that would be interesting to know. Um, here you can see in this little E here, it says A and B, though that's pointing to the two things, um, the ICD-10 codes up here referring to that. Um, so that's what this is saying that um, this session was working on those specific issues for this client. Um, so that's kind of what that looks like. All right. Hey Shelley, this is yeah. Cindy Polich, and this I just this is one of my questions: is that we've been having more denials for uh, people that have prediabetes that don't meet the overweight or obesity guideline, and it's good because we're catching those individuals. You know, I think earlier, you know, mm -hmm. to try to prevent diabetes, but we've had some that that aren't getting covered. And what I don't know is if it's just because insure it's not a covered service through the private insurance or is it because maybe some of our outpatient dietitians are maybe not billing it under diabetes ed maybe they're billing it under nutrition is is one cover better than or more frequently than the other i've always learned that diabetes ed is covered more often and if we can bill it under diabetes ed that we should do that yeah well um my experience with if you're billing diabetes self-management education, the G0108, that that isn't covered under their preventive plan. Um, so, and in also my experience, it, it pays less than medical nutrition therapy. So I always try building um, medical nutrition therapy first um, because that's my, I, I get better reimbursement that way. What, it, you're, you're right, pre when they aren't overweight or meet some of those um, ACA guidelines, um, it is a little trickier. Um, the best way you're going to know what the coverage is is to, you know, have that referral from the physician with their diagnosis codes. Um, maybe if they have um, prediabetes and high cholesterol, um, it would be more likely to be covered. Or maybe if they have prediabetes and you add the Z71.3 ICD-10 code, which is dietary surveillance, um, maybe it would be more likely to be covered. Um, but it, you're right, when they aren't overweight and, um, and they're just pre-diabetic, but it really depends on the insurance. Medicare does not pay at this time for pre-diabetes. It only pays for diabetes and chronic kidney disease. But um, the Academy is working on getting that expanded. That kind of help answer your question, Cindy? I think so. I think it's just specific to each insurance plan because I did have one that was denied that was actually 
who met the overweight guideline, but not the obesity guideline. And that one was denied, um, which, which kind of, and I don't recall the insurance. I'd have to go back and, and look at that. One of the things that if you were on our last call, I'm going to um, share a great tool that um, Krista Godfrey created. So let me hit this and I'm going to go to And this is something that um, you could email, email um, Krista or myself and get access to. Um, okay, share. Can you guys now see the, oh, I need to make that full size here. Yeah, Shelly, we're able to see that. You can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, now I managed to minimize it and can't see it. There we go. Okay. So say your client, this, this is, again, this isn't a perfect tool, but it's a great starting place. So um, let's say your patient has UHC or UMR insurance. This is a guideline. See how she has the preventive area? This is what's going to be most likely covered for United Healthcare. So it says MNT is covered at 100% for children and adults who are obese, that's 30, and have one CVD risk factor, which is all of those listed. So that's specific to United Healthcare. I have found um, at times dietitians, and for a while you could just bill that Z code I talked about, Z71.3 which is dietary su surveillance and insurance would cover. That, that, was, that was wonderful. And um, now you can see here um, that Z72.4 might not cover. How are you gonna know? By calling ahead. And um, does that guarantee it that they're gonna cover? No, that's why it's sometimes frustrating, frustrating to call ahead. Um, but it can get, guide you on the best way to bill. Yeah, that, that is helpful. Thanks, Shelly, for sharing uh -huh. that. Yep, because so she, um, Christina has gifted us with going through, and um, again, this is always a changing thing, but every single one of these, um, she has guidance for um, what is preventive for the different insurance companies. All right. Other comments, questions? Is Krista on here yet? I have one that I... She is not. I think, I don't, not sure that she pre-registered. So I think she's having some trouble getting in. And I don't know how to, I um, just recommended she sign in with the link. Okay. So I just see she's texted me again. Oh, the registration is closed, so she can't oh, get sure. in. So okay. um, feel free um, to shoot her an email um, if you don't have her email. If you have some specific questions, she is great at answering um, a lot of questions as well. Yeah, it's kind of specific to, yeah, working with kids and Medicaid and like ARFID eating disorders. So I feel like, Shelly, you would probably punt that question to her. You know what? I'm going to give her a call right now and put her on voicemail or put her on phone. How about that? Okay. See if, yeah. See if okay. I can reach her here. I feel like it's pretty specific. So if other people have more general questions, um, that's fine too. Jump in, guys. I don't want to take up anybody's time, but hey, Krista, I have. Um, I'm going to put you on speaker if it's okay, and we've got a question for you. Okay. Okay. Um, and can you? Um, Tell us your name so um, Krista knows who you're talking, she's talking with. Hi, Krista, it's Amy Volkman um, doing the outpatient up at Monroe Meyer. Hey. 
Hello. So we're looking heavily into billing. Um, and obviously, there's a little bit concern that after we jump into this pool, we have to make it's just like our policy that we would bill for everybody. Um, there's one concern with I, I do evals evaluations for the our intensive feeding program, which is completely covered in a different aspect the feeding program is but the evaluation I would have to bill for and there's some concern um that I my my um assessment is included in making sure that these children can get into our feeding disorders program so there's a little bit of a concern that if insurance is not covering it then I'm not um then included in these evaluations, which then we kind of run into this circle. So I was curious on, you know, with it being most of them come in or, or receive an ARFID diagnosis because we're, I'm evaluating with the psychologist. Is it like, what? what's kind of the percentage of that, that this would be covered? Um, well, oh, so it's not because it depends on the policy. I would say if there's, if the insurance if the individual's insurance has coverage, they're going to cover ARFID. You know, like all eating disorders is covered universally across all different um, insurance companies. Okay. Unless the policy specifically says exclude the eating disorders. Some some policies will say we only cover diabetes or we, you know, I don't know. I had a, a policy specifically exclude just eating disorders, which is crazy. Um, but Coverage, if they have coverage, it's very, very good chance that they're going to cover ARFID. Um, it just depends on whether their policy covers um, nutrition. But from experience, I would say like 90, 85 to 90% of our clients are, are getting coverage for nutrition counseling. So, um, I mean, you're going to be helping the majority, like, large majority of the clients get that covered. I'm curious how is how is it getting paid right now? Or how like how are your services paid for at um, this point? Yeah. So essentially the the uh feeding program, they have a daily per diem that covers me and speech therapy. The evals I do is is kind of just under that um department's income. But we're obviously looking at expanding so that way my services can be charged. So right now I'm I'm doing it just as part of the department instead of being a billing provider. Right. That makes sense. Um, I'm wondering, uh, wondering about the option of like having that continue that way, and then if you get reimbursement, that just goes that gets you know that revenue goes to that department. Um, cause not everyone, you're right. Not everyone's going to have insurance. You won't want that to exclude them from getting that service or, but the majority are, so I think it's worth it. Yeah. I think the problem is, is then if insurance is not covering it, we're going to have to bill unfortunately. So that that's kind of what, when I've been talking to our administration and our billers is that once we make this jump, of billing, we have to bill equally across the board because I'm credentialed with all insurance insurances here do in Nebraska. Think, do you think having um, billing is going to deter people from having the EVA? And that's, I guess that's what, what I'll have to sit down and talk to the team about. And majority that come in are Medicaid. And it sounds like when I've talked to you about it before that, that kids under Medicaid is, is a pretty good coverage. Yeah, a hundred percent. Um, and, and even with Medicaid, they don't need a, necessarily a eating disorder or diagnosis, but yeah, they don't just need the Z71.3. So mm -hmm. you, yeah, you won't worry about that, but I can't imagine that just the, the cost of one nutrition assessment would deter someone from getting services and you're help, but you're still helping the majority of people with getting most of those covered. I guess they're not paying no one's paying for it right now. Oh man, but you're, the department is missing out on so much revenue. I guess they, I think looking at a, at a, at a the benefit is so much bigger than the potential cost. But anyhow, yeah, that's a difficult administrative like decision. 
I, th I think that's what we're in the process of really weighing out heavily. So, well, Krista, I appreciate your input. I know other people have questions and I want to take up time because I know that's, it's really specific, but um, I might, I might end up emailing you a little bit later about um, eating yeah. disorder codes and ORFID and stuff like that. So. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Great discussion guys. So our next question that came in through the chat is from Megan. Dempsey, and she said, I have some questions about coding for lactation consults and also coding for IVT for obesity. Um, so Megan, are you as the dietitian doing the billing? Like, are you doing the education, the lactation education? Um, make, yeah. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. So I am a registered dietitian, and I'm in private practice. Have my own office in O'Neill, and I'm also an international board certified lactation consultant. Um, so I'm. I haven't had any problems like coding for diabetes and weight management, um, but it wasn't until this past October that I started really taking on the breastfeeding mamas. And I get a lot. Of, I get a lot of referrals in the small towns for that and surrounding communities. But um, I have. I feel like I've exhausted like Eat Right Pro and like as much as I can research electronically. And I feel. I even feel like um, like the national or the professional um, organization for lactation consulting. There's like, not really any guidance there either because I think that happens with. Um, you know, maybe it's a physician who's a lactation consultant, so they're just coding under their profession, and that's that's all. And I'm I'm able to code under that for as a dietitian, but I just have not figured out what is the best way to code. Um, if if I do a full lactation co consult, help a baby latch, do a full breastfeeding assessment, and things like that, I figured out that I can't code under the baby. I have to code under the mom. But just to get like the best reimbursement. I didn't know if there were any other dietitians out there who are also lactation consultants. You know, my thought on this is that that is a wonderful um, niche you found. And um, one of the websites that my good friend Krista advised me on is on uh, Facebook, probably the national um, website. Um, Krista, can you rattle off the name of the one that we're I'm thinking of? Um, yes, let me find it. It's while, um, while, while she's pulling that up, um, I'll um, basically this is a a Facebook page for dietitians nationally doing billing. As you know, we now have a Nebraska one specific to Nebraska as well. Um, but this is where we go with those tough questions. Um, that you can put that right out there, and then you'll quickly hear from those dietitians who are doing what you're trying to do. So it is called <laughs> Insurance Credentialing and Billing for Dietitian Nutritionists. Just a Facebook group. Can you say it one more time, just so everybody who wants to get it can get that? Yep, it's Insurance Credentialing and Billing for Dietitian Nutritionists. If you want the URL, it's facebook.com slash groups slash insurance for dietitians, and it'll pop right up. That, that site is just great to be on just for general learning. You just learn so much from all the dialogue that goes on there. So the, the second part, go so ahead. Thank you yeah. so much for that. I was, and then on the IBT, I was just curious um, if this is the first time I've ever been on one of these calls, so I clearly haven't heard all your conversation in the past, so maybe it's something that's been addressed before, but um, I was just curious um, if other dietitians are coding with the G, I'm going by what Eat Right Pro says, um, G0447 or the G0473, if they're coding under um, the, with the CP, whatever the codes are, <laughs> yeah. um, intensive behavioral ther therapy for obesity benefit. I've wondered if anybody's done coded under that and if they've had good success with that or not. Well, um, I'll talk on that and then you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but 
um, when you are in private practice, like I'm a private practice at Hy-V, basically, um, in order to bill IB for IBT, you have to be supervised for a, by a physician. So um, I can't just get a referral physician. There's supposed to be a physician on site supervising me. So if I worked in an outpatient clinic that was supervised by a physician, then I could probably bill that. Um, people on the call, does that sound right or am I off? I think that is right, Shelley. I um, I also just want to point out that the reimbursement rate for that is much lower than just regular um, medical nutrition therapy. So um, it'd be it's an extra hoop to jump through to get a supervising physician, but also it reimburses lower. So not as um, it's not as worth it. Yeah. So the key is is it'd be better just to find other. ICD-10 codes um, to bill for and bill um, medical nutrition therapy. I have had Blue Cross Blue Shield kick back. I'm not even trying to bill IBT, but they're thinking I'm doing that. And I'm, I'm so, you know, that's why it helps to have the prediabetes or eating disorder or something that isn't just overweight um, related. Because it's, if it's, sometimes if it's just overlay related, they think you're doing IVT and that it flags that I'm not, don't have a supervising physician somewhere in the system. So, Shelly, can you repeat what what code that was that you would need a supervising physician for? Um, yeah, oh, for to, in order to do IBT, individual behavior therapy. Okay. You have to have a physician supervising you. So if you're in individual practice, you probably don't have that. And I try to get a referral for every, because I'd like to, I, I'd love to slip it through if, um, you know, it would, if, if I get a physician referral, well, really I'm communicating with him. He's kind of supervising me. I'm sending nutrition consults back and forth, but that, that doesn't um, seem to fly with insurance companies. I also believe, sorry, I also believe there's a limitation on like, like one or two, very few of, of those sessions per year. So, um, and I think they're like 15 minute increments. So, yeah, I honestly, I, I wouldn't advise using that code anyhow. Um, so we don't know those codes, Megan, because we don't bill them <laughs> for, um, and Megan, I don't know if you know this, but I'm from O'Neill, Nebraska, born and raised. So I'm so excited and I would um, please friend me on Facebook or something so I can get to know you. I go back there now and then. So um, great, great questions. And That's boy, awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I don't have any other questions in the chat right now. We've had uh, some some marvelous discussion. Um, anybody else have uh, something or would they like me to show how I fill out a 1500 form? Shelly, I've got um, one of my insurance billers actually in the office here with me. She's got a quick question for you. Oh, but... great, great. Oh, we have some for her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did tell her that I was like, they'll be really excited to know that I've got one of my billers here with me today. <laughs> They're a wealth of knowledge. But still learning all about the nutrition billing. This is a whole new world I'm asking them to jump into. So, well, actually, um, I was looking at the Medicaid fee schedule for the nutrition therapy reimbursement, and I found the reimbursement on the physician's fee schedule. Um, because obviously, nutrition doesn't have their own fee schedule. Uh, so, is that where mm -hmm. you guys are finding your reimbursement for Medicaid? Medicaid all are Medicaid. Um, Krista, will you answer that question? Yeah, there is a Medicaid uh, for nutri a fee schedule that is public for, um, for nutrition. And do you have a number? I don't have it. Like I don't have it saved or anything, but I could, since it's public knowledge, I can share what that is. Um, it has changed. Unfortunately, it's even decreased over the last 10 years. So it's significantly low. Let me just pull up my 
Um, but it is universal among all, all of the Medicaid and managed care plans. So um, I just want to make sure I give you the right number. I know roughly around what it is, but. I had it written down, Meg, or uh, Krista, but I can't find my notes. So, okay. So per 15 minutes, it's $28 and 11 cents. Is that what you found? Yeah, that's that's about what I found. But again, I, I couldn't find a nutrition fee schedule itself. So you're saying it was like it standard. It, it, yeah. it used to be public. It used to be on the DHHS website. Um, yeah, it, 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 in a while. Yeah, it didn't like it didn't have nutrition. I guess I didn't look under dietitian but, but I, I looked specifically mm. for nutrition oh, um, I think it's under the medical nutrition like a medical nutrition therapy a medical a nutrition mm -hmm. they're being sneaky <laughs> yeah. so yeah medical nutrition therapy um is the the primary procedure codes that we bill which are nine right. seven eight zero okay and two and three yeah I yeah got those i gave her the copy of krista's slides krista that, that was hugely oh. helpful yeah yeah and that's about what i had found for the reimbursement even though it was on the physician's fee schedule because it said it had to be done by a Um, yeah, by medical nutrition. by a nutrition th therapist. Um, so was what'd you say twenty eight twenty seven or twenty three thirty nine, depending on the code. Is that what popped up, Krista? Right. Um. Well, twenty eight eleven. I think that's follow ups. I think it is a little bit higher for the initial. I just don't have that one. So yeah, right around there. Okay. But um, you know, I just think it's so great. Um, right now, um. Our NAN lobbyists are advocating for um, dietitians and, and all of health professionals for those rates um, to be actually increased. Um, they do vary from um, state to state, like um, Medicare's rate in New York is different than it is in Nebraska. Um, uh, but anyway, it's great we have um, our, our lobbyists advocating for improved rates. But what's so wonderful about this in that we do have Medicaid reimbursement and Medicare reimbursement is these are people that probably wouldn't even utilize our services. Yes, we do want fair compensation, but um, you know, instead of just seeing them one time because that's all they can afford, you can actually meet them for additional times and you've already done the labor of entering all your billing and you can actually help them with behavior change because I just feel like one visit uh, is not enough for behavior change. I'm not as good a dietitian as you guys. I can't get it all. I can't fix them in one visit. <laughs> but um, hey, yeah, go Shelley. ahead, Krista. Uh huh. Um, I just emailed you. Well, there was one question. Maybe you already answered it, but about specific codes on which ones um, are basically accepted and allowed. And I put together a little handout that explains which codes are considered preventative and which ones are more medical. I thought it might be helpful if you can pull that up and share it with everyone. Um, so if, you know, if they're looking for specific codes that they can use and which ones are considered preventative versus medical. Sure, I will, um, almost got it pulled up here. Yeah, I think we would find that very helpful because we were just talking about that this morning of, of looking at some of um, the insurance that does preventative and some of them that say no Ooh. to it. Boy, and when she makes a handout, she makes it pretty too. You guys are going to love this. Okay. And I'm happy, I'm happy to kind of explain it. This handout um, that Shelly's pulling up is just in reference to United Healthcare. So each insurance company has different codes that they accept for preventative and different codes that they accept for medical. So um, this is just a snapshot of United Healthcare's, but I will have all of the other insurance companies um, accepted codes. I'm going to actually share it on the Facebook group. If you guys are a member of the Nebraska Dietitians for Reimbursement, you'll see 
that come through as a post. And if you're not, it's facebook.com slash groups nerds for reimbursement. Um, so please join. <laughs> Um, can you guys see that? Do I, is it sharing? Yes. Okay. Yep, we can see it. Thank great, you. Great. Uh-huh. It does cut off. Oh yeah. So when I'll you scroll down so you can see that. Um, so I'll just kind of explain because there's a lot of info real quick, but um, just, so when you're billing preventative, there's a couple of things that you have to, you have to make sure that the procedure code is, needs um, is considered preventative. And so um, you'll see that 97802 through and 97803 are pre preventative codes. And then if needed, G0207 is considered considered preventative and that's for like a second diagnosis. Um, so if you have one of those codes, you're already on the right track for being considered preventative. And then you also have to have a diagnosis code that is considered that qualifies for preventative. So either one of the, the codes in the first column, basically obesity codes, pregnancy codes, maternity codes, um, or metabolic syndrome. And if you don't have that one of those codes, then you have to have two, basically um, an overweight code, which could be a, a, a BMIZ code, and then one of the other codes listed over there. So if you have the procedure code and the diagnosis codes that qualify for preventative, the only other thing you have to do is make sure that you have that modifier 33 checked, um, and then it should go through as preventative. Wow. This Any... Um, and so again, these these codes are different based on the insurance different insurance companies. Um, but that gives you some idea. Any questions on that? Krista, we don't have any questions, but this just looks amazing. This really lays it out nicely. So I appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. And then you scroll down. Oh, what was the last Facebook um, link that you said? She's asking for the late last Facebook link link that you mentioned, Krista. Sure, Facebook.com forward slash groups and then forward slash N E R D S for reimbursement. Krista, is that different than the Nebraska Dietitians for Reimbursement Group? That's the one I'm in, and I, I couldn't find the nerds one, but. Oh, that's the same. No, oh, that's, that's the same. That's just the link to it. But if you're in the Nebraska Dietitians for Reimbursement, that's that's the right one. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And I'll share those later, Those um, the different guides. Um, On that website. Yeah, I'll share, I'll share a link to them. Fantastic. Um, oh, and then so then if you scroll down to the medical, there's a lot of different medical codes. The one thing to know <clears throat> is medical coverage is every plan is going to cover different codes. And this is where if you're if you have a, a patient that doesn't meet criteria for preventative, you need to like you need to or they or you, whoever's confirming benefits, has to check their specific diagnosis because maybe they'll cover diabetes, but they won't cover constipation, or maybe they'll cover anemia, but they won't cover, um, I don't know, PCOS. So you you have to kind of know what your, what, what the diagnosis you're going to be billing for is and check that specifically because there are differences based on the plans. But overall, most plans cover most of these. You're just going to have those occasional plans that are have some random exclusions. So if you have a client with one of these, they should be able to get coverage most of the time. So Krista, with that one um, code for nutritional deficiencies, is that something that a physician needs to give that diagnosis or through my assessment evaluation, I find that they have um, nutritional deficiencies. Am I able to bill for that? 
Super good question. Um, I, to my knowledge, we as dietitians, we can only assign Z codes as diagnoses. So if it's an E code um, for nutrition, but even malnutrition is an E code, which we're, you know, we're supposed to diagnose malnutrition, but we can't actually give the diagnosis. <clears throat> we can just, um, yeah, put it in a note. So, so no, we can't actually give that. We'd have to get a doctor's like um, to diagnose it. But we can do, let's see, the Z, there are some Z codes in here. Oh, inappropriate diet for or eating habits. That's kind of universal with UHC, UMR. Um, we can give that to anyone, basically. It's kind of like the Z71.3, but UHC and UMR, don't, they don't take that one. So we use the 72.4 for UHC and UMR. Pretty much for everyone. If they're coming to see you, there's some type of inappropriate diet or eating habit issue. Um, so you can give that diagnosis and if they have coverage it's going to be covered so can i just repeat that back to you to make sure i heard that right so you it's it's fairly um typical to be able to bill for the um inappropriate eating habits but uh uhc umr doesn't cover that yes. but most of the other ones do oh no uhc and umr, UMR does so it, since it's on this sheet uh, um this is the UMR UHC kind of cheat sheet guide for billing. Um, yeah, I see it now. Yeah, so okay. They do take, they do take, right? So the bottom of it, there's. Okay. And that, and you haven't had much problems with that one? No, no. Usually it's accepted. There, there, there will be those occasional that I'll kick back and say inappropriate diagnosis, but maybe that's an excluded code for the plan. But um, usually that one's accepted. If, again, it's medical though, so it'll, it's not going to be, it's going to go towards the deductible. Um, yeah, so it's usually either there's a copay or they have to meet their deductible before they get a co-insurance, but usually mm -hmm. it's accepted. That's helpful. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, does anybody, can we ask our coder questions that we have on the call? <laughs> I don't know if anybody would have questions, but uh, um, that's pretty awesome. So I'm glad a coder could be a part of this conversation. Yeah, she's, I mean, we mostly bill um, for PT, OT, speech up here. And so it's really interesting to see the discrepancies <laughs> between what we're fighting for and what other um, similar health professions are able to do. It's it's a little frustrating, but I'm excited to move forward, you know, with all of this. Right. Where we're, where we're a little bit ahead of um, physical therapists were a great example and speech paths of really going in there and advocating for themselves. So we're a little bit behind them, but uh, I think we're ahead of social workers. Um, and unfortunately, we all want to um, be able to help people and get reimbursed um, for it. All right. Um, other questions that uh, we, um, I love this open chat. We never know what questions we're going to get, um, but we really have some great dialogue. All right. If we don't have any more questions. Um, Ellie, can I ask, I don't know if this is the appropriate place for this. This is not. Okay. It's related, but I had a former coworker reach out and um, her friend that's an adult is dealing with a lot of food allergies. She was wondering about a dietitian. Anyone able to do that as a private practice outpatient that I could re refer her to? Shelly, Krista, I often send people your way. I want to make yeah. sure I'm where did you out. Where did you say the gal was? I think I think she's in the Omaha area, either Omaha area or um, in Iowa, just right over the river, Council Bluffs, possibly. Not sure. It was just a former coworker that reached out, and so I let her know that I would I would get some ideas of dietitians that she'd be able to meet with. No idea if it's insurance based or if if it's she's willing to private pay. So, well, cer yeah, certainly we we have three dietitians here at life cycle and one of them is licensed in iowa so they could do it telehealth if she wanted to do that um cool. so yeah send her our okay. way i will do that thanks krista thanks 
All right. With that, I think we've, we've had some great conversation here today. And uh, join us on that Facebook page that Krista mentioned, Nebraska Dietitians and Reimbursement. Um, keep the dialogue going. Um, that's the way to go. Um, our next chat, um, we'll, we'll probably maybe wait either take the summer off or maybe we'll do it in two months. We'll kind of see um, what we're looking at. Um, actually, I think we'll take the summer off. I'll make a, a, a decision, but that Facebook page is for ongoing discussions. So um, we'll see you guys on the Facebook page or we'll um, see you in the fall for another open chat. Thanks everybody. Thanks Shelly. Mm -hmm. Thanks guys. <laughs>